This video is going to be an introduction to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Uh, Godfrey Hardy and Willem Heinberg, Weinberg sorry, independently determined conditions that would uh, need to exist for populations not to evolve or not to change over time. And so this resulted in what is now called Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So even though they worked independently, they both sort of same, came to the same conclusions. Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium describes a model in which a population's overall distribution of genes does not change over time. So if there's five homozygous dominant individuals out of 10, that's 50%, then 50% of the next population would also be homozygous dominant or something like that. Um, Hardy-Weinberg allows you to predict genotype frequencies, so how frequently genotypes will come up, so what's the percentage of homozygous dominant, what's the percent of homozygous recessive, etc., and also allele frequencies, so what's the percentage frequency of the dominant allele or, or the recessive allele. Um, it allows you to predict these frequencies in the future, assuming the population does not change. And, of course, it only applies to sexually reproducing organisms. We are not talking about asexually reproducing organisms here. There are five general conditions um, in order for a population to be meeting Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And again, if they meet equilibrium, they will not be evolving. First condition is that there can be no mutations. The alleles present in the population at, the, at this moment are not allowed to change, and no new alleles can be added to the gene pool, so no mutations. No natural selection can occur, so everybody must have equal chances of survival and an equal rate of reproduction. No gene flow, and we haven't studied gene flow yet. Gene flow is where um, organisms either move into the population from other areas or leave the population to go somewhere else. Basically, um, if you have a certain subset of genes and then you move, your genes are no longer in the gene pool of this population. So no gene flow can happen. So that would be immigration or emigration. This shows one of our pale beetles moving to a different population. That cannot happen. In Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, individuals do not immigrate or emigrate, and they can have no reproductive contact with other populations uh, that are not being considered in, in the calculation. Um, you have to have a large population size, so that means no genetic drift. Why we have to have this and not that, okay? Genetic drift are variations in allele frequencies due to uh, random bits of chance. Now, there are a couple of examples of this, but I'm not going to get into those right now. Um, but one sort of example that people don't talk about is merely literally chance, okay? Okay. And so, for example, one person has twins and another person doesn't. Um, they have a kid, but it's not twins, and that is totally due to chance. That would be an example of genetic drift. Now, genetic drift affects small populations in a really, really big way. If you have a small population, someone having twins and passing on double of their traits versus someone not, that affects a small population of 10 a lot. It doesn't affect... A population of a hundred thousand nearly as much. So having a large population size ultimately guarantees genetic drift not having a big effect. It'll happen, but it does not have that much of an effect. And last but not least, mating is random. Individuals do not preferentially choose mates with a certain genotype. So for example, um, on the left here we show random mating where this brown beetle can mate with any given individual, they are not specifically choosing people to mate with based on traits. A non-random mating would be saying this brown beetle just wants to mate with just the other brown beetles.